Well, hello everybody, good morning. Um, sorry for the roughness, I just got up, but, so this is really cool. So, um, <clears throat> the message of the day today is awesome and so encouraging. So I'm gonna read that to you guys. But also, um, I also wanna say that the Lord has let me give more clues. He wants you to know, guys, so he wants you to seek him. <laughs> but I think we're going to get to do a live, which is exciting, like right before. But it is so soon, and um, it's amazing. He's revealing it to so many people. <laughs> I was, like, going to cry this morning. He literally, I have people messaging me saying that the Lord gave them a dream, and he spoke a date to them, <laughs> and it's the exact date that he gave that he gave me, and then that Jess and Cassie figured out, um, and then <clears throat> it goes with the 43rd day, like perfectly. And then I realized that it's actually in his scripture. I mean, the date was there the whole time. And um, it's amazing. You know, if you really look at the date in the scripture, you will see it. And I will say, look at the first Passover. A lot of people are in May, but what was the first Passover that everyone thought was the original Passover. And then I will say you cannot forget about resurrection and you cannot forget about Israel's time because you know we have the East Coast timeline and then we have Israel. So you have to look at that as well. Um, uh, let's see what else. And then it matches the signs in the heavens. Um, <laughs> it's just so exciting. Okay, let me read the first part of the message today. It was Ephesians 1, 17, but <clears throat> this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I'm writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. All this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, <laughs> because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom you promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe <clears throat> him. 
This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. And then that was the, <laughs> sorry, I got emotional because our Lord is coming. <laughs> He's really coming. I mean, it's not a joke, you know, and um, <clears throat> I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, when, when he confirmed the other day that I was in the line of David and the people speaking to him, speaking about him that are that his chosen ones are in the line of David um <clears throat> the lineage crossed over and had something to do with chosen from the very beginning of his purpose well that's when I heard the date and he said go go tell them clues and they will get it too and then because he wants you to know guys he's coming and if you don't know him it's so easy you don't want to stay behind all you have to do is believe believe in him it is it is your faith and it is grace that saved you. Um, here's the second part of the message. I just went ahead. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, <clears throat> you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of you used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's not what you guys do. It's what he already did. It's only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. <laughs> Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. <clears throat> in those days... Um, sorry, I had a phone cough, so it like must be up. <clears throat> um, that we have done so no one can bust it for God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. Okay, then I said, uncircumcised heathen, sorry guys. Oh, in those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus once you were far away from God. But now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups together as one body. Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because what have Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with God's holy people. You are members of God's family. 
Believe in Jesus, guys. He's coming. We'll do a live soon. I love you.